All right, everybody, we're on our way to Lyft, my favorite Manufacturing USA Institute. And that's because they do everything under the sun from automation to additive, Department of Defense contracts, to working with middle school and high school students to get them trained and learned on running automation and manufacturing cells. It's pretty sick, so let's go check it out. Hello? Hi, this is Road Trippin' with Steve. We're here for a two o'clock meeting to see the facilities. Psh, look how look how much weight I carry. Not literally. Hey guys! Hey Steve! I'm so pumped to be at Welcome. Lyft. Welcome, welcome to Lyft. How are you? I'm John. Welcome, nice Steve. To meet you. I'm Amber. How's it going, Amber? Oh man, so I hear you guys got some really killer equipment on your we floor. Do. Let's go take a we look. Do. Well, 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 before we get started, we really need to go up to the learning lab and learn a few things first. Fair enough. So we don't break any top dollar equipment. Yes. I think that they're actually setting up some welding training for you up there. So we'll get the foundation first. You go up there and learn how to do some welding in the virtual space, and then we can bring you down on the floor. Awesome. Sounds great. I've never welded anything before. That's perfect. Yeah. We're gonna cool. send, We're going to put you to work. So you guys are going to teach me how to weld, is that right? Definitely. All right, let's give it a go. Show me show me how to get started. Got to make sure the weld and helmet is on nice and tight. Okay. Don't want it too loose. So now I see some arrows. Correct. And so what that's telling you right now is that you're a little bit too far away from the weld. And so you want to get a little bit closer so that you can get a good weld in there. Awesome. Let's give it a go. Wonderful. And so right now he's actually following the line in order to make sure that the weld is good. You don't want to go too fast because then the weld won't set in. And if you go too slow, you may burn through the material. But in this case, you're looking just fine. Splendid. Awesome. I don't know why I was holding my breath the entire time. <laughs> Are you ready to view your results? Yes, sir. Let's see what okay. he got. A 95. That's wow. incredible. That's pretty good. That is good. That is very good. Very cool. Great job. So how many, how many, what, what ages of the students do you have doing this? Um, so we normally have high school students, but we've had middle school and some elementary students come in and get in here and get a chance to weld. So, you know, they all have a wonderful time. Yeah. That'd be wonderful. So that is one of the main purposes of the virtual welders is really just to get young students, young adults into welding, get them to want to go into the manufacturing skilled trades, which is our main goal of the Lift Learning Lab, is to get anyone from elementary school through even adults uh, that are looking. Elementary school, wow. Yep. Okay guys, so I took my mini welding class and I scored a 95, I'll have you know. Oh, great. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> first fantastic. time, totally my first time. <laughs> So, I mean, as you know, we use robots a lot here at Lyft. You know, we're not the Robotics Institute, but we leverage robots quite heavily. Sure. And one of the things that we're interested in is um, robotic additive manufacturing. So okay. we call that wire arc additive manufacturing. You've also heard it called wire DED, so okay. directed energy deposition. Since so is, th is is this what that machine is doing right now? Uh, yeah, so, so this right here. So, okay. so this is... Uh, a, a model of a, what's known as a 155 millimeter howitzer round. They have on them what's called a driving band, which is this copper band here. So it's 95% it's copper with a little bit of zinc. Typically actually um, swage it on. So they take a ring that's undersized and they push it on and that'll, that, that pressure will help to, to okay. just keep it on there. When we want to shoot these farther, these copper you know, gilding metal driving bands can't do the work. They can't withstand the forces. Gotcha. And so uh, we at Lyft, uh, with some of our government partners, are working to help solve some challenges to, to really stabilize this part of that system. And so you're also redesigning the material as well. And Correct. without getting into the material yeah. details, how do you determine 
that what materials are used and what materials materials are ideal for a replacement. We use a technique known as integrated computational materials engineering, or it's a mouthful, or ICME. ICME. Yep, and that lets us computationally try out thousands of different alloys, different ways of making them in a matter of a day, a day or two, wow. so that we don't have to do it by trial and error and uh, take up a lot of material resources and a lot of equipment time. Sure, sure, and I don't mean to throw around buzzwords, but is that an, is that an AI application? Yeah, it can be, yeah, a lot of artificial intelligence or machine learning, gotcha. smart learning involved with that. Very cool. You can actually simulate the thermal histories, right, as you go through and weld, and based on that and based on how that affects the material properties, you can begin to pick out more appropriate ways to situate your process, and, and there's a lot of magic there that right. thank for, thankful for her team that uh, they're the ones doing it, not mine. So. Right. so if you don't mind, can we take a look inside the WAM booth? Absolutely. We can step into the WAM cell. So in here, there's a little bit of noise because we, we flow a lot of air through here to keep it clean, keep clean air in here and all that. Um, but you see a dual robot setup where uh, we have one robot holding the torch and the other one holds the build plate. So you can see a part that we're working on right here and it's warm so I wouldn't okay. advise touching it right now. Um, but this is a very basic shape that we would use. It's, it's not terribly exciting but it gives us a wealth of information right. based on the thermal history. Um, we can tell what our microstructure is going to be. So uh, down to micron level, what will that structure of the metal be? Is it prone to cracking? Will we have a good structure? Will this just pop off of you know, the build plate or that round structure that we have over there? Right. Or will it form a tight bond? Based on you know, the, the tool path that this, this um, weld robot takes, we can predict damage and cracking within the structure itself, within that, that cylinder, gotcha. so that we know not only um, what does our material look like, are we affecting anything else in the system, is it good? How do you guys measure the, the microstructures of your built material? Is that where we're heading next? Yes. yes. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> So okay. this is the Met Lab, right? Do you want to describe kind of the workflow that uh, that happens in here when a sample comes in? Sure. Yeah. When when you make a material based on the process history, based on how it was melted, how it was pushed around, pulled around, uh, things can happen inside that metal structure, and we have to look inside that. So we come in here. We cut it apart. We use um, specialized saws. So is it in like an acrylic plastic and you polish it with acetone? Yep. Um, phenolic, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep, phenolic gotcha. plastic, yeah. Mm -hmm. Here we describe how Lyft is using industry-changing mass spectrometry technology for quantitative chemical analysis. So, so this sits right over top of the sample, okay? And the way this works is there's a laser beam that shoots down, hits the sample, and makes a little cloud of atoms. And you can see, if you look very carefully, there's a little tiny pinhole, mm -hmm. right? And that's where it goes. It shoots right through that pinhole. And that little cloud of atoms then, it comes up and you have this, this little cloud and there's this tiny little gap right here. And there's another laser that comes through and bam, hits that and makes ions out of it. And then that's where all the rest of the magic happens. But actually this right here is, is really the secret sauce in making it work the way that it does. So, right. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's how we do chemical analysis at Lyft. So now we're so, going to the ICME lab? Yeah, I think this leads into to the virtual side of things awesome. for sure. Awesome, let's go take a look. So now we're at our last stop in the ICME lab, and naturally, there's just a bunch of computer screens. Amber, tell me what's going on. Yeah, so in this room, what we're developing is sometimes known as the materials digital twin, or you can think of it like chat GPT for materials and manufacturing. Gotcha. So yes, yeah, smart development of materials and ways of making them. A conversational way to develop the right specialty alloy for your use case or the customer's use case. Exactly. Essentially, right? Mm -hmm. Very Yeah, with cool. the processing that we have now, think additive manufacturing, you can't just pull an alloy mm -hmm. off a shelf and have the material be suitable for that manufacturing mm -hmm. process and the environment. They're just not designed for that. And with ICME, what we can do is develop thousands of alloys overnight. Without having to make them, I can tell you exactly how they're going to behave in, say, a hypersonic environment versus an automotive environment and let you know as the customer whether it will be suitable or not.
So that's like having a thousand interns work for you and delivering overnight instead of in six months. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. And, and they're really actually doing something that that is, is, I'd say, transformational as well in the sense that they're also working to let disparate softwares talk to each other, right? So all these pictures here, all these videos that you see, many of them represent different capabilities, um, and those capabilities uh, they result in models, right? And and getting one model to another type of software is something that's a bit of a challenge. So her team, they're working on some very interesting things to, to ease and, and lubricate the movement of those models. Pseudo push a button type capability where you can end up with uh, um, some, some results that my team would normally take decades to produce. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, John, yeah, Amber, Steve. thank you guys so much. I need to leave and go get, let my head cool down. Okay. This well, is... There's plenty of uh, snow out there for you. So. <laughs> thank you. That sounds, that sounds like a good idea. <laughs>I could be a pilot. Listen, I've also got a lot of hours in ace combat. All right. And that's all she wrote. Hey, Steve, what happened? <laughs> what happened with your parking? I should've, thought you were going to be a pilot. Trust, I should have trusted the instruments. I thought you were going to be a pilot. <laughs> Listen, I'm st I still did a better job than most soccer moms in Northern Virginia. Thank you very much. <laughs>